In this video, Trey's gonna get a triple stochastic screening. Stay tuned. Hey guys, a very warm welcome to you. All right, so what is triple stochastic screening? It is basically looking at an oscillator. Could also be an RSI, CCI, any oscillator. It's looking at an indicator like the stochastics on three separate time frames to help us, one, stay out of bad trades or potentially bad trades, and two, help guide us into the correct trend, the correct kind of approach, as opposed to trying to chase stuff, as opposed to not aligning ourselves with the underlying theme of the market. Anyway, guys, this video is sponsored by Core Spreads Australia. Please check them out. There's a link to them in the description below. Go and see if they are the right broker for you. Go and see the spreads, go and see the markets they offer. Go and have a check out the platform, get up a demo, open up a live account, have a little look around as maybe a primary broker or a secondary broker. Thanks to those guys sponsoring the channel. We're able to keep producing videos like these for you. Okay, so triple stochastics, let's have a look. Daily chart, 60 minute, five minute. You can play around with this a little bit. You can maybe have a 15, maybe have a one, or maybe have a weekly, but we kind of get the idea. So what we're looking at here is the daily chart, big uptrend, no kind of dispute with that. The 60 minute, what we're kind of doing here is we're looking at you know, what the 60 minute could look like for this chunk. So really, you know, that could be a little pullback and give me a little bit of poetic license in my drawing, guys. You get the idea of how you probably looked at multi time frames yourself. So you get the picture here. So we've got a bit of a kind of downtrend here. We've got a pull push back up. So this is this downtrend. This is this push up downtrend again, and then push up again. So we kind of, as we know, as we start to go down the time frames, we're zooming in a lot more to what's happening. And then a five, imagine that's this chunk here, and that will be a little bit of consolidation, and then we just get a, a kind of good rally up. Okay, so we are trying to align ourselves in the best possible way that we can with the trend without chasing the trend. Because as we know, if we're kind of chasing the stuff, now ultimately this is quite nice, and you probably would have got away with it, but we know that if we chase stuff, we have to sit through a lot of drill down before, even if it does, takes out the high again. And that ruins your risk order ratio. That's the main key thing for me anyway, is that if you're buying at highs, you've got to sit through a hell of a lot of pullback. And let's say you're sitting through you know, let's say some sort of currency pay after a 200 pip pullback, you're looking for, you know, 500 pip target. You know, that's, that's a lot to sit through. If you timed it better, you could halve that, you could do a quarter of that. So we're trying to time things a little bit better so that we're buying on the pullback, we're buying as the turn is happening. We're not just blindly buying and having to sit through, you know, a lot of heat before it continues, which it may well do given enough time, especially if we're a strong enough trend. But again, how long do you sit through it? How do you quantify where you come out if it's wrong? Very challenging. All right, so this is a triple stochastic method. So on the bottom here, we've got a stochastic, and again, you know, give me a little bit of a uh, little bit of leeway for my drawing skills, but I think it's good to kind of illustrate it here um, and kind of see what we want to see. So, you know, what stochastic is like, guys. Uh, an oscillator generally will go into an overbought condition or an oversold condition. The market pushes up and up and up and up. It will stay overbought for a while, pulls down. It will go into an oversold condition. And then it kind of chops around. It will go overbought, oversold. I might not quite get into those conditions. Will go up and down, up and down. So, oscillator. That's what it does. So on a daily, as we're pushing up, we might not ever get an oversold. We might get a little dips down like this scenario. You know, we push up, we get overbought, dips down, overbought, little dip down here. And these will probably be a little bit deeper in the real world, a uh, little bit dip down here. And so, you know, we're, we're looking at that. And then we look at 60. Now when we look at 60, we're probably more likely to get a little bit of a different type of trade environment because this is you know, could be multiple days of down move uh, on a daily chart. It could be, you know, three or four days there. That could be three or four days on the 60. So there could be some downtrend there, which might push our stochastics into oversold territory on a 60 minute. And then if we looked at a five minute, again, we're looking at this little area here, but it could be a completely different scenario. You know, we could be pushing down into oversold conditions here oversold, overbought, oversold, overbought multiple times. And then as we start to break out, we could still get a little oversold condition here, potentially, as we push up. So how how narrow we go, you know, d d changes the oscillator completely. And just a, a kind of extra thing, guys, we have generally have our oversold down here at below 20 on 
our uh, stochastics and above 80 on our stochastics. You can play with it around, some people use 30, I think that's fine, a 70 and 30, 75, 25, but there's some kind of point at an extreme where you want to dictate it's overbought or oversold. Okay, so what's this triple screening strategy? So the triple screening strategy, it's almost a tongue twister, is this. Number one, it stops you going to bad trades because the first rule is, hey, I never take a trade when I see the triple stochastics all in the same area. In other words, if they're all overbought, I don't take them. So you've got an overbought condition on your daily, an overbought condition on your 60, and an overbought condition on your five. That would tend to indicate the daily stretched, the 60 stretched, and the five is stretched. And you're really chasing a little bit with that. That's really, okay, and I'm generalizing, of course, there's gonna be loads of examples out there where you know the market goes on and on and on. Of course there are, there's always the exception to the rule in trading, guys, but to keep us on the, the right side of things and to not be buying at highs all the time, and there's a time for that, but let's just say we don't wanna be always trying to do that. We wanna try and finesse things a bit. That's the first rule, we don't buy when we've got triple overbought. We don't sell, we've got triple oversold. Now, if we are a day trader, now we go to our five minute and we go, okay, we want to align ourselves with the direction of the higher time frame stochastics, but we want to align ourselves with a kind of counter trend move on our time frame we're trading. So what does that mean? We're looking for an overbought condition on our daily, an overbought condition on our 60, and an oversold condition on our five to go along on. So we have the higher time frame shoving us from behind, so to speak, and then we've got the five minutes, which is basically saying, okay, as that starts to go oversold, it means we've got a little bit of a bit of a breather, a little bit of unwinding. You know, somewhere like this, for example, you know, we've got a trend. Obviously, we're gonna be overbought here on our 60, probably around here. We're overbought on our daily, we're coming to this sort of level here. Um, but we're starting to get oversold. Now that could indicate that, okay, so first, especially when you get the first oversold, even better, that's kind of an, a, an extra level to it, first oversold condition, now we might get one more shove or a little extended shove before we kind of really push on higher. And some people might say, well, if those are overbought, this is not very good now. Okay, there are some adjustments and tweaks you can make. Maybe you say, I'm only gonna take an overbought daily on oversold 60, oversold five, but comes to that in a moment for day traders, if we're looking to get a quick scalp, quick 50 pips, whatever it may be, 40 ticks out of the market, this may well be literally going from oversold to overbought. I know technically we're not quite there now. Imagine we just oversold. We go from oversold to overbought. We're grabbing the grabbing the tray. We're using the wind behind us. We're snatching a bit out of the market. Thank you very much. Moving on to the next one. Same. Well, similarly, if we were swing trading, we'd go to our 60, i.e. swing trading, I'm saying here, as appropriate to the time frame we're looking at. So 60, you're probably looking at maybe two or three days max, two days max. I know if you're a swing trader, a higher time frame, you might want that on a four hour or something like that. Maybe that's on a weekly. You get the idea. So now we're waiting for our oversold condition on our 60 with our overbought condition on our daily. We're not so bothered about the five because if we're trading off a 60, it's not so relevant. Now, this is where we could, if we wanted to, slip another time frame in between those two. But that's getting you know ahead of ourselves. What we're doing is looking for an overbought condition here and we're looking for an oversold condition here so as we start to go overbought whichever one we're looking at as we start to go into oversold that's when we're looking to buy now the extra trick here guys is that we wait not necessarily for it to go oversold but to come out of oversold so rather than us just waiting if this is our stochastic here as our oversold rather than us hitting the buy as we go into oversold uh, in experience, that means you end up taking quite sitting there for quite a bit because this thing can sit in this oversold condition, just drift lower and lower and lower, and it can be unwinding even the overbought condition on the daily. Waiting for it to turn back up. Yes, you give a little bit back and it's not a sweet spot of entry, but just pushing back up means that you can quantify your risk a little bit better, i.e. you can put a stop loss in and say, hey, if we start to come back, you can obviously have a stop loss, of course, based on price as well. But if the market starts to roll back and the oscillator starts to go back into an oversold condition, you can ditch it and say, well, you know what, it's not working for me. Because the theme of this trade is I've got a higher time frame helping me. I've got the time frame that I'm trading unwinding, a little bit of a spring unwinding, and I'm waiting for it to stretch again. So I'm trying to time it using this kind of oscillator. All right, guys, that is the triple stochastic screening method. If you like this kind of stuff, a thumbs up is appreciated. And don't forget to visit our channel sponsors, Course Spreads Australia, link them in the description below. Take care, bye-bye.